so in this video i am going to uh, talk about the tuning fork tests now the commonly performed tuning fork tests in the clinical examination of the ent patient are the dinis test the weber's test and the absolute bone conduction test i will uh, sh show these procedures in this video and i will in the end speak a little bit about the schwaback test although the video of the schwaback test has not been included so starting off this is the uh, rinis test so first of all we'll put the tuning fork into vibration like this and we'll place the tuning fork in the patient's mastoid so see the patient uh, was previously informed about uh, the procedure properly so he he was asked to lift his hand the point when the he can no longer hear uh, the vibrations when the tuning fork was placed on his mastoid so since he has lifted his arm now we'll bring that vibrating tuning fork near the external auditory canal so now see the placement of the tuning fork it should be like that only so uh, now we'll come to the same test rainy's test and I, I'm showing it from the different angle so that you can exactly see where on the mastoid I'm placing the tuning fork. So let's go into this. So there I have placed the tuning fork on the mastoid and there the patient lifted his hand up. And so we shifted it, shifted the tuning fork in front towards the uh, opening of the external auditory canal. So that was a uh, Rini's test. Now, uh, before going into the Weber's test, let's talk about the uh, findings uh, that uh, you normally get in a Rini's test. So, if I s again uh, trace back, so this was me measuring the bone conduction. So, when we are placing the uh, tuning fork on the patient's mastoid, it is basically a measure of the bone conduction then after that we are placing the tuning fork in front of the external auditory canal opening so if the patient can hear the vibrations when we are bringing the tuning fork in front uh, near the external auditory canal it means that the air conduction is more than the bone conduction which is termed the Rini positive ear now Rini positive can occur in two instances the normal ear and the ear with a sensory neural hearing loss now this is a Rini positive so what will happen in case of a conductive deafness so the patient will the bone conduction will be better so after uh, the vibration stop in the uh, mastoid will bring the tuning fork in front like this only same but the patient will not be able to hear anything so that indicates the bone conduction is either equal or bone conduction is more than the uh, air conduction so in both of those cases uh, it is a conductive deafness because in a normal ear air conduction should be greater than bone conduction so that ear will be termed as a Rini negative ear so then uh, progressing into the Weber's test so here I'll just describe the Weber's test so the same after setting the tuning fork into vibration we will place the tuning fork uh, on the uh, labella of the patient we can basically place it in any midline uh, bony prominence from the glabella to the occiput but never on the symphysis menti because uh, symphysis menti is uh, on a separate bone what i mean by that it is on the mandible so the transmission of sound has to go through the temporomandibular joint so the bone conduction will reduce in that case so it is better to avoid the symphysis menti and otherwise you can put uh, the uh, tuning fork on any um midline bony prominence preferably you should place somewhere between the glavula and the hairline on the forehead so 
in a normal ear the patient will hear the vibrations on both of the ears equally so that is what this patient has indicated because uh, he has normal hearing in both of his ears i'll just uh, go back a little bit and show you again see after setting it into vibration i am placing it in the on the glabella and i am asking the patient whether he can hear equally in both of these both of his ears so that is the weber's test now how will you interpret the findings of the weber's test so weber's test can be better heard on either of the sides suppose the patient is hearing better on the right side and less on the left side it can indicate either a conductive hearing loss on the right side that is the lateralization of the vibrations to the side with the pathology that happens in case of a conductive deafness or shifting towards the right can also mean there is a sensory neural hearing loss on the left side so the complaint of the patient uh, so suppose the patient complains of uh, difficulty in hearing in right ear and you are finding the weber's test to be lateralized to that same ear it indicates a conductive hearing loss and if the patient is complaining of a reduction in hearing in his right ear and the weber's test is lateralized to the left side it means a sensory neural hearing loss on the right ear then uh, going into the absolute bone conduction test so starting we'll again put the uh, tuning fork into vibration uh, wait i'll just play it a bit okay now see i have placed it on the master but the important thing to notice here is i have used my left hand to press the dragus onto the opening of the external auditory canal so the ambient sound is masked here only the bone conduction sounds will travel no other sound will travel through the ESC so only the specifically the bone conduction will be heard in that ear so it is important to always occlude the external auditory canal with the tragus with your uh, other hand so that is what i have done here so here again the patient has been properly informed beforehand so when he will stop he hearing uh, he will raise his hand so let's continue see he has raised his hand now immediately i will occlude my own tragus and place the tuning fork on my master see now as the patient in this case was absolutely normal i couldn't hear any vibrations when i place the uh, tuning fork on my master normally in a patient with a sensory neural hearing loss provided that the examiner has normal hearing the absolute bone conduction test is reduced for the uh, patient what i mean by that is after the patient raises his hand when he indicates that he can no longer hear the vibrations of the tuning fork and i place it on my master by occluding my external auditory canal i will still be able to hear vibrations provided i have normal hearing so that is the significance of the absolute bone conduction test so continuing to play the clip so there it is so that is how do you do a absolute bone conduction test now so the interpretation of the absolute bone conduction test would be either normal or reduced by normal it means the bone conduction is comparable to the examiner's bone conduction and reduced if, if the bone conduction of the patient is less than that of the examiner so coming to the schwaback test now the procedure of the schwaback test is almost similar to the absolute bone conduction test but you need not occlude the esc no need to occlude esc so Uh, the procedure will be same you will set the tuning fork into vibration and place the tuning fork on the master of the patient and when the patient indicates that he or she can no longer hear you will then again place it on 
your mastoid so again it is a comparison between the bone conduction of the patient and the bone conduction of the examiner however you are not occluding the external auditory canal so the ambient sound can go in through the external auditory canal so what will be the interpretation of the schwebeck test in cases of the types different types of uh, uh, deafness so in case of conductive hearing loss the patient's bone conduction will seem greater than that of the examiner so bone conduction of the patient will seem greater than that of the examiner in case of conductive hearing loss why this happens is because the ambient sound cannot go in through the external auditory canal so the masking effect is not proper on the cochlea of the patient and in case of a sensory neural hearing loss the bone conduction of the patient will be less than that of the bone conduction of the examiner so coming to an important component that you are commonly asked in uh, when you are asked about the tuning for test is what is a false negative rini now this is a situation which can only occur in case of an unilateral severe sensory neural hearing loss what will happen is when you are measuring the bone conduction and you have placed the uh, tuning fork on the mastoid of the patient suppose the patient has a right sided severe sensory neural hearing loss what will happen the bone conduction will have a transcranial spread and it will stimulate the cochlea of the other side so you have a severe sensory neural hearing loss on your right side but in the cochlea of the left side is getting stimulated so there will be a perception of sound so apparently you will find there is a bone conduction present in the right ear which is actually not present and then again when you will measure the ear conduction since the cochlea can almost perceive no sound so the air conduction will almost be absent in the right ear so it will seem as if the bone conduction of the right ear is greater than the bone conduction of the sorry uh, air conduction of the right ear so this situation may arise in only in a case of a unilateral severe sensory neural hearing loss and this situation is termed a false negative rini so that is uh, all about the tuning fork test that you need to know uh, to do well in your uh, ent examinations